Hey, what is going on everybody? Hope you're all doing well, staying safe. Today I've got a tips and tricks video for you if you got the all new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, or S21 Ultra. I've got 21 of those tips and tricks for you. Now, as always, if you've been using Samsung Galaxy phones for a long time, you'll inevitably know a bunch of these, but hopefully you find at least one or two or three or maybe more that help you out or that you find useful. So let's get started here. I'm gonna start with something in the home screen settings. Now to go to your home screen settings, you just tap and hold on your home screen and go to settings on the bottom right. And out of the box, swipe down for notification panel will be disabled unless you're restoring from another phone in which this setting was enabled. Now with that disabled, when you swipe down, it's gonna go to your app drawer. When you swipe up, it goes to your app drawer. So instead we would like for our quick panel to show up when we swipe down, otherwise it's a little bit redundant. So we're gonna go ahead and toggle that back on, swipe down for notification panel. And now when we return to our home screen, you'll see that when you swipe up, we go to our app drawer, but when we swipe down this time, we go to our quick panel. So the second thing I'll have you do is go into settings and then we wanna to go to display and out of the box, when you go to navigation bar, you'll see that it's going to be the buttons that are enabled. And depending on which way you order those buttons, you're gonna have a home button in the middle and then on the left or right or vice versa, you're gonna have the multitasking button and the back button. By now, I think it would be a good idea to get used to swipe gestures if you haven't already. They make for a more fluid experience and it takes better advantage of the screen real estate on the phone. So go ahead and enable swipe gestures. And the tip is to disable gesture hints. Gesture hints is on out of the box. And what it does is provide this little white line here to let you know that this is where the gestures begin, but it's not gonna end up just being this thin white line. In many apps, this entire row that encompasses this gesture hint is going to be a different color. It might be a black backdrop. It might be a white one. And so, You've got an entire row here that takes up a millimeter or two of screen real estate, all for that little gesture hint. And to be honest, once you take a few minutes to get used to these gestures, this is not going to be necessary anyway. So I would suggest you turn it off, take full advantage of that screen real estate, and then the gestures work as normal. And to me, it just makes the experience that much cooler. There are no navigation buttons, navigation hints, etc. It's just the gestures. Next thing we're gonna do is go back into settings go to notifications, and I'll show you a couple things here. Go to advanced settings. Now you're going to see out of the box, it's going to show notification icons as the three most recent. Now, if you, I guess, feel like it's a little bit cluttered when your notification icons show up on the top status bar there, uh, if it's more than three, maybe you're gonna feel like it's a little bit cluttered. With three most recent turned on, it'll show your three most recent, and then a dot if there's more than three, Personally, I prefer to show all notifications on the status bar. So I'm gonna switch it to that. And then right under that, you see show battery percentage. Now, a lot of times out of the box, this is actually disabled. So all you get is a little battery icon here that shows you roughly how much battery you have left. I prefer to see the actual percentage. So just toggle that on and you see I've got 73% battery. Otherwise I'd have to guesstimate based on that icon and what I thought I have maybe anywhere between 60 and 80, but I think most of us would prefer to see exactly how much we have left. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you has to do with our home screen and our quick panel again. So let's go to the home screen and swipe down twice and then tap these three dots on the top right and then go to quick panel layout. Now you wanna show brightness control above notifications because if you have that, you can adjust the, the brightness quickly and on the fly when it's disabled then when you swipe down once, you don't see the brightness controls. You're gonna to have to swipe down a second time. And if you're anything like me, sometimes you're going to be adjusting the brightness either lower or higher. Maybe you just got into bed. Uh, maybe it's a little dark. Maybe you think it's uh, too bright, too dark, whatever. You're gonna to wanna to adjust it. So let's go back into here, tap the three buttons on the top right, and then go to quick panel layout. And I'm going to re-enable show brightness control above notifications. Now a new home screen option on these Galaxy S21 devices. This one is on One UI 3.1. If you tap and hold here, it used to be, if you remember on Samsung Galaxy devices, you can either get your daily briefing or you can get a Bixby feed. But now you can finally, if you turn this on, choose between this Samsung free 
or Google Discover. So you can finally get your Google feed if you swipe left on your home screen. I personally don't want anything there, but if I was going to choose something, it would be the Google feed for me. So the next tip has to do with multitasking, whether you're using the buttons or the gestures. When you go into your multitasking screen here, by default out of the box, you're going to see these suggested apps at the bottom, and they're just based on apps that you open and open frequently. So I personally don't like these here and they change all the time and I, I just find it a little bit cluttered. So if you don't want these to show up, then all you have to do is go tap on these three dots up in the top right here and go to settings. And the only setting you'll see is show recommended apps. Just toggle that off and it's gone. And I just think that looks a lot better, a lot more fluid and less cluttered. All right, the next tip has to do with biometrics and security. So go back into your settings and then scroll down a little bit and you'll see biometrics and security. And we'll go to face recognition. Now I already have my face set up in here. The face unlock isn't as secure as the fingerprint unlock, but I guess uh, unless you're on some top secret missions or you live with a bunch of people and you do suspect that they're gonna try to get into your phone or something, uh, I wouldn't worry about it much, but I like to have both of them set up, both the face and the fingerprints. So one thing you can do, by the way, let's say you wear sunglasses or glasses in general, or maybe even a mask, you can try this add alternative look. And what that will do is add to your face data so that in more circumstances, it will be able to recognize that you're trying to get into the phone using face unlock. In addition to that, there are other face recognition settings here that you can turn on or off as you desire. Now, next tip along those same lines is your fingerprints. Now I have four fingerprints added here, but they're really just two. They're each thumb left and right. Now I would recommend that you set up both your left and your right thumb twice. That should make for easier and quicker recognition for the fingerprint sensor, which actually works really well. And if you wanted to use four different fingers, you could do that and everything should still work well, but it adds just that little bit of extra data to recognize your thumbs quicker and more efficiently. Now the next tip back into settings, we're gonna scroll down to advanced features, motions and gestures, and I'm gonna have lift to wake toggled on. Now by default, it is toggled off, but when you have it on, it's going to help in conjunction with other settings, making getting into your phone that much easier and quicker. So when your phone screen is off, let's say you've got face unlock enabled, all you're gonna to have to do is lift the phone and it wakes it up. It'll scan for your face quickly and you'll be right into your home screen. So of course my face is behind the camera, so it's not gonna unlock my face right now. But again, out of the box, that is disabled. I recommend enabling that unless you like spending extra time on your lock screen. Now in conjunction with lift to wake, the next tip, we stay in settings. We go back to biometrics and security. We go back to face recognition and out of the box, this will likely be enabled. It says stay on lock screen until swipe. Now I have that disabled so that once the phone is unlocked, it's going to go straight to your home screen instead of staying on your lock screen. So combine that with lift to wake and it's just a much quicker way to get right into your phone. And again, all the different firmwares of this phone are different depending on where you are in the world. So some of these settings might be enabled or disabled by default. And if you're coming from another Galaxy device, it's just going to import the settings that you had on that one. So you're gonna to wanna to go into settings, biometrics and security, face recognition, and turn stay on lock screen until swipe off. So the next tip has been around for a little while. If you've been using Galaxy phones for a while, you're probably used to it. If not, you may be switching to Galaxy for the first time or to Android for the first time. It's split screen view, which is very useful. There are many use cases for it. Uh, you could be perusing or opening up or reading two things at once, or maybe you are driving and you want YouTube music open on one side and your navigation on the other. There's so many different things you can do with it, but you just swipe up into your multitasking view. You tap on the icon of the app and then you tap open in split screen view. And then all you have to do is choose which app you want to open with it. I'm just gonna put calculator. And you see now I can also adjust how much screen real estate is being occupied by each app. Now the next tip is also something that's been around for a while, but I've noticed people make very little to no use out of it. And that is being able to execute a specific task within an app without necessarily having to open it and then manually navigate to that task. All you gotta do is simply 
long press on any of these icons and you are going to have some quick shortcuts and things to do. For example, if you long press on any of the messaging apps, it'll let you compose a quick message to somebody you've spoken to recently. I'll tap on this weather channel icon here, tap and hold, and you get some quick shortcuts here. If I do it for Microsoft OneNote, again, some quick tasks that you're able to do through there. So really the possibilities are endless here. Long press on Chrome, long press on the camera app. You'll be surprised at uh, how much time this can save you. A few seconds here and there, but they add up. Next thing we're gonna look at is the built-in screen record option. So go back into settings, scroll down to advanced features, and then scroll down a little bit and you'll see screenshots and screen recorder. And now you see all the options here you have for your screen recorder. Now you can record media sounds if you want, or you can set it to not record any sound, or you can record the media sounds and your microphone. You can also set your video quality, or if you want, you can have a selfie video recording as well, and you can set how large you want that to show. Now tip number 15 is right in this menu as well. Have you ever noticed sometimes you'll take a screenshot and usually the quality of the screenshot is fine for most tasks, but sometimes you'll want that image to be a little bit sharper. Well, right here in settings, advanced settings, screenshots and screen recorder, you have screenshot format. Now by default, it's set to JPG, but if you set it to a PNG, that's going to take a higher resolution screenshot, a clearer shot, if you need that screenshot to be of extra high quality. Now, of course, that's gonna take up a little bit more space in your storage, but you can set that back and forth as you like. Now, tip number 16 is going to be customizing this Google search widget that's on my home screen. What you're gonna to wanna to do is simply open your Google app, and then from there, tap on more, those three dots on the bottom right, and then you'll see customize widget right there. Tap on customize widget. And then from there, you can customize exactly how that looks. Most of us will be having this Google widget, I think, this Google search widget on our home screens. You may not, but if you tap here, for example, you can change it to say Google or just the G, or you can go here and change the shape of it. It could be more squared, a little bit rounder corners, or completely rounded corners. You can change the color schematics. You can go here, make it black, and you can change how see-through it is. You can make it a completely solid color if you'd like, or completely see-through. I had it on completely see-through, and I set it to the regular gray palette here. So you can set that to your heart's content. And when you go to your home screen, you'll see the results. Now you may have noticed here that my app labels are hidden. It doesn't say the name of the app under that. If that's something you like, that's something you can easily do through Samsung's own GoodLock app. Now you download that in the Galaxy Store. If I swipe up here, this icon right here is your Galaxy Store. And once you download the GoodLock app, as you see it loading here, there are several different features you can use here. I really liked the Quick Star feature, but that has not been updated yet in order to change the colors, for example, of your quick panel icons. But what I did within GoodLock is I downloaded Home Up. And through Home Up, what you can do is customize your home screen further, grid settings, etc. You can have the pages loop when you swipe left and right. And I enabled Hide App Icon Label. And then obviously, if that's off, you see the app labels there, but I'm going to turn that back on because I like how clean it looks without the app labels. Now for me, another very useful feature that you don't get in stock Android, but that is available on many different Android skins, including One UI is a feature called Dual Messenger. And it has a different name from different manufacturers, but here on the Galaxy, it's called Dual Messenger. And it just allows you to have a second instance of say WhatsApp or Snapchat. So here we are in settings. We'll go back to advanced features. You swipe down and you see dual messenger. And like I said, you can turn on a second instance. Let's say you have a business account of any of these messaging services, and you can even use a separate contacts list if you want, just to toggle that on. And this works exactly the way you would expect it. You'll have two separate WhatsApp icons, for example, two separate accounts that you can use and log into. Simply enter the one that you would like to use. Now, tip number 19 here, guys, is your side key settings. Now, of course, this is your side key. That's what Samsung is calling it. Most people will call it your power key. You just tap and hold that. Go to side key settings right here on the bottom, and you could set how you would like this side key to behave. Now, right now, when I press and hold, 
It goes to the power off menu. That's how I like it. You can use it to wake Bixby instead. And then you can customize this double press by either opening Bixby, quickly launching your camera, which is what I have it set on, or you can open an app, which is pretty cool. Let's say you wanna open Spotify or something. You'd just be able to double tap on that side key and launch that app, or maybe your navigation, anything like that. All right, and the final two tips, tips number 20 and 21, are, I guess you could call them slightly more advanced, but they're really, really easy to get set up. Go back into settings, and we're gonna go all the way down. And this developer options is not going to show up for you until you enable them. The last option will say about phone. And when you go to about phone, I'll cover up some information here, like the IMEI, you go to software information, and then you just keep tapping on this build number and until it says developer mode enabled. It says here that developer mode has already been turned on because I already enabled it. So once that is turned on, you're gonna wanna go back to your settings and you'll see developer options at the very bottom. Now tap on developer options. And what I'm gonna show you is how to slow down animations. I know a lot of people in the past have showed you how to completely disable animations and that may make things quicker, but somehow they don't really look quicker because they look janky because there are no animations or transitions in between. If you wanna take full advantage of this 120 Hertz display and have things looking as smooth as they possibly can, then I recommend this as something that you can do. Now you're gonna to wanna to scroll down a while, scroll down, scroll down, and then you're gonna see window animation scale. By default, that's set to 1X. Transition animation scale by default is also set to 1X. So if you want to make this a little bit smoother, it's going to slow down window animation and transition animation a little bit and set it to 2X. Uh, as I did, or you can set it to whatever you want. Again, by default, it's at 1x. I set it to 2x, and then I go down to transition animation scale and do the same thing. I set that to 2x, and I just like how fluid and smooth everything looks when I do that. Now, back in this very same developer options, do you prefer to have every app or almost every app in dark mode? I like that. I've been using dark mode for a long, long time, and it's a little bit annoying to me that not all apps have a dark mode yet, but you can force dark mode in almost every app through developer options. If you just scroll down here and toggle on force dark mode, of course, by default, your developer options isn't even on. So force dark mode isn't on. You toggle that on and then even apps on Android that do not have a dark mode yet. Let's say for example, the weather channel app that does not have a dark mode yet on Android for some reason. So when you launch that, you you see here that all those white screens are now darker. To use another example, here's ESPN. When you launch it, the backgrounds, everything is white on Android, but here you have everything with a darker background. So that's really, really cool. There are a ton of apps you can open now using force dark mode that will open in the dark mode. All right, so that's it, guys. 21 tips and tricks for your Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra. I hope you found at least one or several useful. And if you like videos like this, I've got plenty more on the way, so go ahead and subscribe. I am waiting for my Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus in Phantom Gold, one of those custom colors you have to order from the Samsung website. And as soon as I get that, I'll be unboxing it right on the channel. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I try to get to as many of them as I can. Stay safe, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.